In this video, we're going to continue working on our project and I provided a link in description where you can download the file so you can follow along. So here is the end of part one. You can just drop that package into your project, click import. After you import the package, you can click reload to reload the sample scene. And that should get you to where we left off in the previous part. I'm going to provide the file for the other parts as well. So if you get stuck or anything, you can go to the next part and get the file from there to look at how I set it up and if you missed anything. In this part, what we're going to look at is when you click on this cell to actually show what is behind. And also we're going to look at how to display more than one cell for our game. The first thing that we're going to do is go to our cell image. And for this image, I actually want to add another component. And this is going to be a button component. A button component has some features. So when you click on it, it changes color and stuff like that. But what we're looking for is this event right here on click. Now the approach of using the button is not the only option that we have here. So keep that in mind. But how we can use this button to hide this image is by triggering a method on the on click event. So we can click add right there. And for the object that we want to run the method on is this image. So we can actually drag it from here or we can use any of these components and drag it here. Now to specify which method we want to run, we can click on this drop down. And in here we have the list of the components that are in this game object. So there's the game object, rectangular transform, canvas render, image and button. So that's the components that we see here. And if we go under game object, we can see here the method that we used in the previous video to disable this image set active. So if we select that, we have a checkbox that we can check if we want to set that game object to active or not. So if it's checked, that means it will set it to true. If it's unchecked, it's going to set it to false. Now we can go to our cell and right here in the start method. This is the image set active false, the method that we called in the previous part. So we either can remove this line or if you want to keep it for reference, you can always comment it out by using slash. So double slash is going to comment this code and it's not going to execute. And you can see the comments are used here as well to describe what this method is doing. So after we comment that part of the code out, we can save the file. Now, if we go back to Unity and click play, you can see that the image doesn't disappear on start. But now if we click on this image, it disappears and we can see the number. Now, if we want to hide that image with our own code, what we can do is go to cell and in here we can create a new method. I already mentioned that we already have two methods here, update and start. Now the word void we have before the update method is telling us what type of output we get. And if the method is not returning any type back, then the type that is used is void, meaning that nothing is going to be returned. So let's create our own method. We're not going to return anything from this method. So we're going to also use type void. And for the method, let's call it on click in the parentheses. We can add a list of variables that we will require for the method to receive. But for our on click event, we're not going to be using any variables. So we'll just leave it empty. And to start writing our code for our method, we can add the curly brackets inside these curly brackets. We can write what we want to do. So let's do the same thing that we did right here. Image that set active false image dot set active pass in false for the input. But one more thing that we need to make sure is that this method will be available for us to use from outside of this class. And how you can tell if it's going to be available to use or not is if this method is public or not. So just like we used public for our variable to be able to set this variable inside of our inspector, we can also set methods to public and this will allow us to run the method outside of this class. Now to show that this method is called to disable this image, we can add a comment saying debug lock clicked, click save, we can go back to unity. And in unity, let's select our image under our button component. Let's change down click event instead of triggering the image game object set active to trigger the method that we just created. Since our component is under our cell game object, we can drag the cell game object here. And under functions, we can see that we have access to our cell component. And in this list, we can find the on click method that we just created. Let's select that and click play. 
go to console so that we can see our message. And now if we click on this cell, you can see that the message clicked was printed and our image is disabled now. Now currently we just have one cell. So let's take a look how we can add more cells. We can easily duplicate the cell by clicking control D and then change the position of it and position it where we want. But it's going to take quite some time to actually position all of the cells that we want. And if we want to change the size of the cell, we're going to have to redo all of that. So instead, what we're going to do is go in canvas. And in this game object, we're going to add another component. And the component we're looking for is grid layout group. And what that does is it looks at the children of this canvas game object and it groups him with the size of the cell. So the current cell size is 100 by 100. We're just going to leave it at like that. And if we want to add spacing, so let's add four for the spacing in Y and X. Also, there are other options that we have here. The one that I want to change is child alignment. Currently it's set to upper left. That's why all of those cells are in the corner. And I want to switch it to middle center so that all the cells are going to be aligning from the center. And now if we select the cell and duplicate some more, you can see that all those cells are evenly spaced out. And once we hit the limit of our layout, you can see it goes to the next line. And if we click play, if we click one of the cells, it displays the number behind it. But currently the numbers is just one. So we need to look at how we can create an actual map for our game. Let's remove all of these cells and just leave one. And to create our map and the appropriate cells for our game, we're going to go to canvas and add another script for our canvas. So let's add a component. Let's call it game map, create and add. That creates another C sharp file. So let's go inside here and take a look at some new things that will help us make this map. So like I said, we need to actually have multiple cells for our game. We already looked at how to create variables. So let's create a cell, but our game map needs to have more than one cell. So we can actually go and create another cell, call it cell one and continue doing that. But something that might help us in this situation is actually using arrays. Instead of having just one cell, we can create a array of cells. And the way that you declare an array is after your type, you can put brackets and then this is going to be our cells. And we can initialize an array by saying new cell and then pass the size of an array that we want to have. So let's say 10 and that's going to create an array with 10 cells. So in start, the way we can refer to a specific cell is by adding a bracket and pass in the index of the cell that we want to actually get. So the index starts with zero. And since we have array of 10, the last index is going to be nine. So zero through nine is going to give us one cell. So now let's take a look how we can use these arrays to create a map for our game. So let's go back to unity and let's try to make a simple map. So I'm going to disable the image so we can see the number that we have there. Let's duplicate to have five cells. And let's say that our second cell is going to have the mine and we will represent a mine with a star. That means the cells on both sides of these mines will be set to one because they see one mine. And then the last two cells are going to be zero because they don't see any mines. So the way we can do this with an array go back to our game map and let's actually use an integer type. We'll call this a map and we'll set it to a new integer and we'll have five cells. Now, if you want to set specific value for this array, what we can do is actually use curly brackets. And in here we can pass in the values that we want to save. So it was one, then comma, the next value was a star. But instead, let's use nine for a mine because we're creating an integer array. For the next one, we're going to set one. And for the other two, we're going to set them to zero. And this will create an array that we can use to create those cells. So let's remove the cells that we manually created and enable the image back on. And now what I want to do with this cell is create a prefab. So I can drag and drop it into our assets. And that will create a prefab. What a prefab is, is basically saved configuration of a game object. And now we can remove the cell from this list. So let's click delete. And our canvas is going to be responsible for creating all the cells that will be necessary for us to play the game. 
but we need to pass a reference to this cell object in order for our game map to be able to add the cells into our game. Let's go and do that. So in our code, let's create a public game object and we'll call it cell prefab. Click save. And now under our game map script, we can see that we have cell prefab. So we can drag that prefab cell and connect it for our variable. And in our code, if we want to add this cell prefab to our game, what we can do is call a method instantiate and pass the cell prefab as the object that we want to instantiate. And for instantiate, you can see that we have 10 options here. But since our cell prefab is actually a UI element, we need to make sure that it's inside our canvas. So we need to specify under what parent we want to instantiate. And there is an option for that. So we pass in the object and the transform of the parent. So we can pass the transform of this game object. And if we actually try transform, we can see that there is a variable that is available to us. It's available with every component. And the component is actually included with the mono behavior base class that we're using here. We'll talk about base classes later on, but for now, we're just going to use some of the options that are available through mono behavior and transform is one of them. So now we can save this file, go back to unity, click play. And you can see as soon as the game starts, we actually get one cell. And in our hierarchy, we can see that it's cell clone. That means we clone one of the prefabs. If we click on it, it works just like it did before. So that's how you instantiate an object. We're going to stop here for this part. In the next part, we're going to take a look at how we can create the exact amount of game objects that we need for the map. If you have any questions about this part, make sure you write that in the comments. Click on the like button if you found the video useful and I'll see you in the next one.